Hi, I'm Mark Donovan here, and I'm with Laconia Flight Academy, and what I'm doing today is I'm working on the full motion Redbird simulator that we have here at Laconia Flight Academy, and I'm demonstrating some of the features, in particular, um, some of the instrument capabilities, particularly flying instrument approaches. Um, a person working on their instrument radio can have up to 20 of their 40 hours required um, foggle time, if you will, um, be done on a full motion Redbird simulator like this one here. Uh, also, the private pilot can also um, have up to two and a half hours of time logged towards their private pilot rating uh, using the simulator. Um, but beyond just those two and a half hours, there's also a lot of additional benefits for private pilot students because we can work with them on the simulator to go over maneuvers for the first time, how to do various ground reference maneuvers, S-turns, turns around a point, rectangular um, um, patterns. Uh, we can also work with them doing slow flight, power on stalls, power off stalls. Um, similarly, we can do spin training awareness in this aircraft. Um, there's just a whole host of activities that you can really work on here at a less than half the price of uh, being in an airplane. Um, even emergency procedures can all be done in the aircraft. And with the use of a iPad and connected to the Redbird simulator environment, the instructor can cause any type of failure condition, can change the weather at any time, and really kind of provide a very uh, rigorous method for providing training to the students. In this first demonstration of using the Redbird simulator, I'm flying an instrument approach into Laconia, New Hampshire Airport. I'm actually flying an ILS-8 precision approach in for a landing on runway 8. And that was an ILS lead approach into coming. So now I'm going to demonstrate some slow flight and a power off stall um, in this aircraft. And this is configured for a Piper Warrior, same type of aircraft we fly here on a daily basis. All right, we're going to slow this aircraft down, and get ourselves into slow flight, and then we'll do a power off stall. Put our first notch of flaps in, below 85, second notch, third notch, and we're going to bring our power back up to about 2,000 RPM. We're going to try to hold about 65 knots and about 3,000 feet. So we're just trying to trim the plane out, maintain our heading. Um, we're flying about 60 knots. I'll try to bring it up a little bit more. Trim it out. And here we are in a slow flight configuration. I'm going about 60, 62, holding about 3,000 feet. All right, so now we're in slow flight. I'm going to demonstrate a power off stall. This is associated with people coming in for landing and stretching the glide. Um, usually a base to five type of situation. We're going to bring our power back to 1,500, let the nose come down. Establish a descent of around 65 knots, which is our approach speed on a short field or a soft field type landing. Once we've established that, we're on heading. There's our airspeed. We'll bring our power smoothly to idle. Bring the nose up just above the horizon. Power's all at idle. We're going to wait near the horn. There's a the horn, waiting for the full brake. There's the brake, nose comes down a little bit, and full power, one notch of flaps, comes out. Your speed's alive at 65, we have a positive climb, we can take our second and our third notch up, and we'll just climb back to 3,000. Okay, now what I'm going to demonstrate is a power on stall. We're at 3,000 feet, we're about 90 knots here, we're going to limit ourselves a little bit faster, and then we're going to do a power on stall. Power on stalls are associated with people taking off and we get a left turning tendencies that are associated with the aircraft and they're pulled up too steep and basically stall and gone and that winds up to a stall spin. So we get ourselves down to 3,000 feet MSL and we'll start the maneuver. We're going to do this maneuver in a clean configuration just like we're taking off. We're normally taking off with no flaps. 
All right, so how we're gonna do this maneuver is gonna bring our power back to about 1,500. We're not gonna allow ourselves to lose any altitude. And we're just gonna let our airspeed bleed off to our rotation speed, which is about 60 knots. Maintaining my 3,000 feet while my airspeed bleeds off. I'm keeping my head in. At 70 knots, 65. And there's my 60. And then at up to about 2,300 RPM, pitch up very steep to about 20 degrees of pitch. Plenty of way run to keep the ball centered, staying the course, wings level, and just hold that that attitude. From any yaw, there's the horn, there's the star, goes down to the horizon, full power, but the air speed filled back up, about 65 to 70, come out, and then once I'm level flight, I'll bring my power back to 2300. And that's all there is to doing a power on stall, basically getting into it and recovering from it. So those are just some of the things you can do in a full motion Redbird simulator. Um, again, we have the Siliconian Flight Academy. It's available for a Piper Warrior configuration, as well as an SR, Cirrus SR20. Um, it's also available in a multi-engine Seneca, Piper Seneca as well. And uh, again, it's a great uh, resource tool for uh, learning how to do maneuvers for the first time, um, at a, doing and learning them at a fraction of the price of being in the airplane. Uh, this makes it so when you get into the airplane, it, the time is shorter to get up to speed uh, doing those maneuvers. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified of my next video.